This is Middle Class Matt from Don'tBuyTheHype.Blogspot.com And I am a super fan. And I am Sports Genius. Now, what I do as a super fan is I pretty much sit in the stands just like everybody else, but I give better analysis than like the experts do. And I have three great loves that I am a super fan of. Now, this is not kind of my high school team or my small college. But the three great loves are the University of Chapel Hill football, University of Chapel Hill basketball, and the Carolina Panthers. I'm a diehard fan of these, of these teams. I don't like teams from other states. I don't believe you can really pull for them. I like to watch them. But these are teams I live and die for. And I went to see UNC play Wake Forest in football this last Saturday. Now, I also went to see him play Elon. I didn't do a video. I was busy with a lot of my NFL videos and other videos, fantasy videos, but what was there to say but just to do nothing but gush about UNC beating them 62-0. But as good as that game was, maybe this Wake Forest UNC game was just that bad. With the one loss they suffered 28-27, at Wake Forest. Now, in Lee, against Lee, um, Elon, the offense looked very good. In the Wake Forest game, the offense didn't look bad. Now, Renner, UNC's quarterback, Bryn Renner, suffered what some people believe maybe was a concussion and continued to play. And there's been some speculation whether he should have gone back in or not. But he still had a good game. And Gio Bernard, one of the best backs in the country, clearly one of the best backs in the ACC, didn't play. He was injured. And so the offense still produced 27 points on the road, which is not so bad. So the offense that the UNC fans had expected after Elon pretty much saw a pretty good offense um, considering the situations. But the defense was as bad as it gets. When the defense allowed the go-ahead touchdown, once UNC had gone up 27-21, everybody, the UNC fans, there was a lot there at, at the Wake Forest games, not very far, they traveled. We're getting real excited. Wake Forest punches in that touchdown, sucks the air right out of the building, at least for the Carolina fans. Suck the air right out of the Carolina fans. Now, that defense... There were some really big problems with it. Now, I think the defensive line and the linebackers are pretty good. But on the way to the game, I was talking to another fan, and he's also a diehard UNC fan. And he was like, well, didn't that defense look good against Elon? And it did. It looked ferocious. They were tackling, game tackling, tackling behind the line of scrimmage. But it was Elon. And what worried me more than just Elon was that UNC runs a 4-2 five defense. That's like a prevent defense. And I did not like that. I thought that was dangerous. Now the two linebackers are going to get lots of tackles. Kevin Reddick, Travis Hughes, and they're very good linebackers. Should be all ACC type um, performers. The defensive line looks pretty good. Players like Deion Guy, Sylvester Williams, who looks like a monster out there. But the secondary looks terrible. And uh, looking at some things online, I saw there were a lot of missed assignments. It didn't take me to look at, look at the report to know that, though. I saw that out there. But what I was making sure of by looking and researching that was that I was making sure it wasn't the pass rush. Sometimes when you can't get an effective pass rushers, the DBs are out there on islands, and they get hung out the dry. And I really think it's just North Carolina's defensive backs are really bad. They let, got a name here, a receiver for Wake Forest, Michael Campanero. hope I said his name right. Maybe after that whooping that UNC took or, or that depressing loss, I guess it wasn't a whooping. Maybe I don't care if I say it right. But he was number three. He lit them up. The crowd is screaming, guard number three, somebody get on number three. And just every time they're just eating him up with these little dunk passes, 10, 15 yards, you know, some of them even less. Um, but 10, 15 yard completions just ate them alive. The UNC Tar Heels were eaten alive by them. And they allowed Tanner Price, the quarterback of Wake Forest, to throw for 327 yards, which is more yards he threw from Liberty. So it was really depressing. 
if UNC gets outclassed and they get beat down, then that's 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 different. But in this case, it was just like one point lost. You gotta win those games to be a good program. And I, as a UNC fan and a Southerner, want UNC to have a good football program. Just don't want to just pull for basketball. But some people are just content just to wait the basketball season. Anyway, UNC is looking forward to Louisville. A bounce back win on the road would be big. It would make up maybe for this Wake Forest loss, but this is a top 25 team, and I don't believe Wake Forest is a top 25 team. If UNC wants to be a top 25 team, they have to beat teams like Wake Forest, even with injuries. And they uh, need to go and try to take on Louisville, defeat them, and maybe that can make up some ground. So this is Middle Class Matt. Check out all my football videos, my Panther videos, my NFL videos, and I will see you next time.